Are you a s addict? Is that right? I don't know if it's right, but it's fun. Russell Brand has today been accused of sexual and emotional by four women. He was 31 and she was 16. I was a child. That means women feel safe around me. Uh -huh. They trust me. Oh, and also I raped someone once. Come on. <gasps> oh. What do you think that gesture means, the way you're touching that bowl? I can undo your bra, just like this. <laughs> I found out the real truth, which I can't necessarily disclose because I keep it locked in my safe for a rainy day. Russell Brand is an absolute monster. He's being exposed for his disgusting past, which includes 16-year-old high school students and past employees treated like pimps. Multiple victims claim that Russell has this evil, glazed look over his eyes, and when he aggressively took advantage of them, they were devastated. So let's get into it. <laughs> Russell Brand is an actor and comedian, and I know him best as Katy Perry's ex-husband. And honestly, it's a good choice that they divorced because Katy dodged a bullet when it comes to Russell and his dark past. I mean, right now he is being canceled for all the right reasons because he's accused of R-wording someone and SA, which you guys know YouTube is strict with their rules, so we have to use code words, but it's pretty bad. Four women have alleged SA between the years 2006 and 2013, while he was a presenter for BBC Radio 2 and Channel 4. Other women have made a range of accusations about Russell's controlling and and predatory behavior. Of course, Russell and his team are denying all of these allegations. And trigger warning, looking at some of these stories, they are horrific. One woman alleges that Russell went on to her and did things to her that she did not consent to against a wall in his LA home. She was treated for what had happened at a center the same day, according to medical records. So it was not something she consented to. She went to authorities after to get treated for what he had did to her. Text messages show that in the hours after leaving his house, she told Russell that she had been scared by him and felt taken advantage of. When a girl says no, it means no. And he said he was very sorry, which sounds like an admission of guilt. A second woman alleges that Russell harmed her when he was 31 and she was 16 and still at school. She said that he referred to her as the child during an emotionally harmful and controlling relationship which lasted three months and once he forced his man parts down her throat making her choke. She says she tried to push him off and she had to punch him in the stomach to make him stop. I mean, he sounds dangerous. A third woman claims that he harmed her when she worked with him in LA and that he threatened to take legal action if she told anyone else about the allegation. The fourth person to come forward claims that she was also harmed by him. He took advantage of her and he was controlling and manipulative, really what everyone else has been saying. So there's a clear pattern here. Russell Brand has today been accused of sexual and emotional by four women during the peak of his fame. The allegations are claimed to have taken place between 2006 and 2013, while Brand was presenter for BBC Radio 2 and Channel 4 before then becoming a star in Hollywood. In the report by The Times, one woman alleges Brand sexually assaulted her when he was 31 and she was 16 and still at school. It is claimed the actor referred to her as the child during an emotionally and controlling relationship that lasted for about three months. Other allegations made against Brand include instances where he was stated to be controlling and display predatory behavior. So we're getting a lot of information at one time, and that's because this has been an investigation for a while now. Over the past few years, reporters have interviewed hundreds of sources who knew or worked with Russell, including ex-girlfriends, their family, their friends, comedians, other celebrities. I wonder if they did reach out to Katy Perry, but along with these interviews, reporters have also seen private emails, text messages. They submitted freedom of information requests and viewed medical and therapist notes. So there's a lot of evidence here. They've been working on a really large case for some time. I'm assuming he's an American citizen now because I know when it gets international, there's some, you know, some issues there. I would say it's clear that Russell Brand is probably not mentally well. Throughout his career, Russell's material has acknowledged his addiction to intimacy, and he's often publicly joked about his predatory behavior and his intimate life. Oh, no, someone once. <laughs> 
<laughs> I killed her after. <laughs> Look how sensitive and vulnerable he is. He, he must be, be gay. gay. That's right. That means women feel safe around me. Uh -huh. They trust me. Then bang, pregnant, bang, pregnant, bang, pregnant. For the queen, you can't. Do an don't say for the queen. For the queen! No, I don't see that, please. Oh, love, be Russell careful because that's a low cut dress. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I'm only wow. flesh and blood. I've got instincts. Oh! Uh <laughs> When you laugh like that, it makes me know what you'd sound like when you come. Pop yourself down on my knee and see if we can't get you pregnant. <laughs> come on. Oh, oh my God, he's kidding me. Oh, yeah. wow, okay. Everything's you, okay, you, isn't you, it? You, yes, you're very you clear. Look, because you took your eye off the road because things was getting a bit fruity out there. All right, Liz, <laughs> we goodbye. We were, yeah, thank you. Well, it's been really a wonderful experience. <laughs> See you later, Liz. <laughs> That's awful. All right, take care. <laughs> Russell, how can I do your bra just like this? <laughs> What do you think that gesture means, the way you're touching that bowl? What does that indicate? <laughs> what is that? What's the subtext of that? You're a sex addict, is that right? I don't know if it's right, but it's fun. Those clips are insane. Like, how did we not see this sooner? And I guess, like, being a comedian, you assume that they're joking and you can't take them seriously, but obviously these jokes are coming from somewhere. Like, this man clearly thinks this way to speak and utter these words and to try to take reporters' bras off and try to kiss them. It's just like, really? I, I would be so creeped out. Well, the Times and the Sunday Times did their due diligence and they actually gave Russell eight days to reply to these allegations before the world learned about them. And at first, he said that they were not in the position to provide any response to the allegations because we had posed a large litany of questions. So they had a lot of questions, a lot of names, and I guess like Russell didn't feel inclined to respond at this point. It actually seems like he and his lawyers are trying to take the approach that the Times have coordinated a collective effort to, you know, just attack him. Which it is kind of like a coordinated effort to like attack him, but attacking him under like you know, the, you have to include the context, like what these crimes are, because it's giving very much Harvey Weinstein. So yeah, probably, you know, an attack, but at the same time, it's, I mean, he deserves it. And he's currently on tour right now, so I wonder if there's anyone who's like confronting him about these things in person. He briefly addressed the allegations at the start of a gig after seeing a woman hold up a sign that said, we stand by you, Russell, stay strong, stay free, we love you. He said, there are some things I cannot talk about, and hopefully you appreciate that I'm going to give you everything I've got. And I don't know what his defense is going to be, especially when he's messing around with a 16 year old. So let's talk a little bit more about Alice. She claims that he would send a car to her school to take her out of lessons. As her taxi approached Russell Brand's home, Alice remembers the driver begging her not to go inside. The driver recognized the destination. He started to ask questions and Alice admitted that she was 16 and still in school. So she, shouldn't, she probably shouldn't be over at Russell Brand's house hanging out with him. She says the driver replied that his daughter was the same age and Alice, please, I'm asking you not to go in there. You could be my little girl, and I would want someone to do this for her. He offered to take her home without any charge, but Alice insisted it was fine. Just a heads up, her name isn't Alice. That's just another name, like a nickname they're using for the lawsuit to protect her identity. But it seems like Russell knew what he was doing was wrong because he was 30 years old, he was, you know, hanging out with a 16-year-old, and his management even knew that he had a teenage girlfriend and gave him advice on it, saying not to hang out with her in public. It is so scary the lengths that these management firms will go for their clients to protect their evil behavior. So a BBC chauffeur driven car picked you up at the age of 16 to take you to Russell Brand's house? Yes. Yeah. The BBC um, has said in a statement, the documentary, just referring to that dispatches program and associated reports contain serious allegations spanning a number of years. What would you like from the BBC? I'd like to know why more wasn't done at the time to keep, I mean, he already had a, he had a very well known record of doing things that were inappropriate on the air, having inappropriate conversations. He was, he was not being held. I don't think he was being held to the same standards that other presenters or other, certainly not news readers would behave like this. You know, anybody else that was working with the BBC, there was exceptions and allowances made for him. And we need to ask ourselves why. We've seen this time and time again. A lot of the stars of the shows get a lot of free passes and end up taking advantage of those. But Russell's had issues. He had a drug addiction at one point. He gave it up in 2002 and filled that void with hooking up with people and 
harming them, you know, trying to use the YouTube language. But in 2005, he actually received treatment for this addiction at a clinic. There's also a big controlling aspect here. I mean, Alice, the 16 year old shares about a time they went on to a date and he would instruct her to wear certain outfits. She was quoted saying, I remember wearing a red dress and big platform shoes and I had my hair blown out and I was wearing makeup, but I didn't look like a woman by any means. I was a child that had gotten dressed up for dinner. On their first date, she claims that Russell asked her as soon as they met to confirm that she definitely was 16 and not to try to protect himself because he was quoted saying, I don't give an F if you're 12 years old. I need to know where I stand legally. So yeah, he, he didn't care if she was 12 years old. He just wanted to know her age. I don't know how that legally helps him. But yeah, I mean, I don't think it's uh, maybe if 16 is the, the age of consent, but I mean, still, he's 30 years old. The first time that they had became intimate, Alice told him that she was a virgin and he claims that he was instantly aroused. He was, quote, like, oh, my God, my baby, my baby, my baby, and picked Alice up and cradled her in his arms like a child and stroking his hair, saying, you're like my little dolly. She says that he became preoccupied with her being innocent and pure. I had a friend that worked in the Leicester Square building that housed MTV. I was coming out of that studio and Russell was coming in. I'd just been to Topshop. He took the shopping bags from my hands and picked a dress out and he said, okay, you're gonna wear that on a date with me. I didn't look like a woman by any means. I was a child that had got dressed up for dinner. I liked him and I felt a bit giddy. I felt special. Alice says that Russell engaged in behaviors of a groomer looking back, but she didn't even realize that it was then back at that time. I mean, she was a child. She accuses him of being controlling. She once says that he ran a bath for her and demanded that she stay in it while he went out for about an hour. Another time, Alice alleges that Russell removed the during them having you know what without her knowing. One of the reasons why Alice is speaking out is because she wants the industry to change. For many years, Russell has been applauded for his jokes describing how he's manipulated women for intimacy. Quote, I think he was very skillful in the start of making his identity be. I'm the womanizer. I'm the addict. I'm inappropriate, but it's all just a joke. It's funny. Alice claims it's a smokescreen for a lot more of his dark behavior. And I totally agree with that premise because when you see some of these people, these comedians make these jokes. I mean, it's just impossible for, I, I guess, like what you'd consider normal if there's normal anymore, but for people to go to that point and even have those thoughts. So how do you get there? I mean, you must have something in your mind like this. So Russell's jokes are telling because they're not really jokes. It's just truths about himself. 2008 VMAs. Who's hosting? You're hosting. Right. Can you remember my name? Russell. And can you remember my surname? Brown. It's not Russell Brown, Brittany. What is your name? <laughs> Russell. Brand. Brand. Sorry, my bad. It's all right. It's okay. <clears throat> Russell Brand. You will remember that name because I think pretty soon that's going to be your surname. Brittany Brand. Oh, gosh. Yeah. In the early years of Russell's career, he worked for Channel 4 and he would actually use some of the staffers there to go and get some young women from the audience that he wants to meet. One employee was quoted saying that we felt like we were working as a pimp for him because he would go and ask these female audience members to come into his room and he would employ these women that worked for him to go and scout them out. Kind of like a Glenn Maxwell type of situation. One employee claims that there were occasions where she had to collect Russell from a hotel room and he appeared to be in his underwear and suggested having a quickie with these employees. She could not tell if he was joking or not, but I think at this point, there's nothing's a joke. Russell's behavior was widely discussed by those working on the TV set. One runner, Rachel, who was 24 at the time, claims that she walked into Russell's dressing room and claims that he flashed his privates at her. She also alleges that he insinuated that she could do some things to him. She was shocked and refused. And at this point, she was too scared to tell anybody because she was scared of losing her job. So that's why Alice wants to speak up so the industry changes. And what's gross about Russell's career and his behavior and everything about this entire video is the fact that he's always had someone there on set or in management defending him. I guess one talent manager said that 
It happens with the talent. Boys will be boys. It's not a big deal, but it is a big deal, especially in a professional working place. There was never any sense that he'd done anything inappropriate that was uh, brought to our attention, certainly. You know, we knew he had a reputation for being promiscuous and everybody knew that at the time, but that was as far as it went, as far as we knew. If something, if something like that was brought to our attention, all, I've talked to all the senior people on the team and none of it ever was. And if something like that was brought to our attention, we'd absolutely act with 100%. Of course we would. And what do, you, what do you think of now the allegations that you've seen? What, what well, it's pretty depressing. Like, why are these managers allowing their talent to continue behaving like that? Helen, who worked as Russell's personal assistant in 2006, claims during her job interview, she told one of his managers that she had a girlfriend. So she's, you know, a lesbian. And the manager actually said that being gay was seen as a plus for the job. She believes that the manager wanted to make sure that she would be safe. He just wanted to make sure it was a platonic situation because if he had a personal assistant who was you know possibly straight then maybe russell could get to her so yeah helen i guess had to take one for the team there but she still had to go through a lot as his assistant for example she claims that he would often just wear underwear around her while she worked she also remembers russell openly showing his friends intimate pictures of women once they were at a festival and she claims that russell was showing off these pictures and she leaned in and as he's going through these pictures he gets to a picture of somebody helen knew it did something to me it made me feel really sick to my stomach these are women who aren't expecting to be shown to the dude's friends. There's also another woman who was hired as a personal assistant, and she was closer to Russell's mother's age. And I think that she was hired because management wanted him to try to tame his behavior. And she claims that he also didn't wear clothes around her, and he'd just be in his underwear. And at that point, she was unfazed because she's like, I have a young son, like, I've seen it all. But there are disgusting moments out there, like clips of him talking about his employees in ways where it does really seem like he's just pimping them out to whoever. I've got a persistent called Part of her job description is that anyone I demand she um, greets, meets, massages, she has to do it. She's very attractive, Jimmy. Well, that's, that's, that's a good start. R what it's kind of... start? You could send her along to do some research. Would you like her to wear anything in, in particular to Jimmy? I'd actually prefer her to wear nothing. Right, so you want my assistant to meet you naked. Okay, well, that's, that's not going to be, that's not going to be a problem. Like, why would he even speak like this? It's giving very much Epstein. At one night in a party in LA, Nadia, a businesswoman who was in her 30s, exchanged numbers with Russell and they later got in touch and they were texting and talking on the phone. She said that they met up in June 2012 at his house in LA and they went on to have consensual, you know what, but she was unsettled by the glazed overlook that he had. Quote, he does this thing where he glazes over. I don't know what's going on in his head. It was fine, but it was a weird first time experience with someone when you are getting intimate with them for the first time. And maybe if he does have a true addiction, like an illness to this, maybe it is a glazed look that he gets and he's like kind of dissociating during those moments, which seems like a like a poor way to handle trauma. During one text exchange with Russell, he suggested that Nadia brings a friend over. She claims once that she walked into his home and the door was just unlocked and he comes running out of the bedroom completely in the nude while she's still fully dressed and she was just really taken back by him. Nadia says Russell took her to the wall and kissed her and made a comment, something along the lines of, I'll keep you safe, and then told her that a friend was already in the bedroom and he wanted her to join them. Nadia was like, no, I'm not doing that. That's not happening. Like, why would you even like, bring me here if there's someone already there. But she tried to get away from him and she slipped away from the wall. Then she went to another wall that had a painting on it, a huge painting. And her bag got stuck underneath that and it's still on her arm. At this point, he's grabbing her underwear and pulling it to the side. Nadia alleges that she told Russell to get off and that she wanted to leave, but he carried on. Quote, I'm stuck underneath this painting and he's pushing up against me. He's a lot taller than me and he has this glazed look in his eye again. I can't move and I told him, get off, get off. Nadia claims that Russell pushed her up against the wall and R worded her without a calm. Russell finally finished and then she was able to push away from him, which sounds like a 
worse than a horror film. Like that sounds terrible. Obviously he knows he did something wrong because then he blocks the door and she tries to get out while he's asking her, are you okay? And she's like, no, I'm not okay. I need you to get away from me. And then he's asking her to calm down. Nadia says that Russell eventually stepped away from the door he had been blocking after Nadia told him that she wanted to use the bathroom. So she literally had to escape him. She was quoted saying, I ran out and jumped in my car. Thank God I didn't park in his driveway and I booked it out of there. That was it. I sat on the road a little bit longer. I was in a daze. At 3.29 a.m., Russell sent Nadia a text message saying, I'm sorry, that was crazy and selfish. I hope you can forgive me. I know that you're a lovely person. He tried calling her, like, 20 minutes later, but the call went unanswered. So another admission of guilt. Nadia says that she was up most of the night and she did not reply to his text until the following morning around 11 a.m. And she said that she was taken advantage of and that he scared the crap out of her. Quote, do you know how scary you are when you have that glazed look in your eyes? When a girl says no, she means no. Do I have to go and get myself tested? Question mark. He then says that he's very sorry and that she doesn't need to get tested. But still, I mean, that's disgusting that he felt inclined to just take advantage of someone who's clearly not wanting it. Like, I can't imagine like wanting to hook up with someone who doesn't want to hook up with you. Nadia, meanwhile, had told a close friend what had happened and she took her to a treatment center at UCLA Santa Monica Medical Center that same day. She has shared a full copy of her treatment records, which state that she provided her underwear and other samples of evidence, which were frozen. Officer from LAPD was alerted by the center, according to the notes, but she chose not to make a police report. She said, I didn't think my words would mean anything up against his. The notes also state that she was worried if her assailant's name is somehow released, then her name will be dragged through the dirt. She then had therapy at the clinic for the next five months and during her sessions records show that Nadia was contemplating criminal or civil proceedings before ultimately deciding against it. However, she wrote him a letter saying she was hoping to regain some of her power in the process and her note said that she says she sent it to his house. In the letter she asked, do you know what you put me through, my body through? You scared the sh out of me on July 1st. I thought in any situation I would be strong enough to fight someone off. You completely broke me down. Now let's talk a little bit about Phoebe. Phoebe was in her 20s when she met Russell at an alcohol Alcoholics Anonymous meeting before they started working together. They did have an intimate relationship, but one night they were at a property in West Hollywood and she realized that all the other staff left and she was alone with Russell. She describes being trapped in a bedroom and realizing that Russell wanted to do it with her. She says she can't remember whether he was in the nude or underwear, but he ended up naked at some point and started chasing her. She claims that he grabbed me and got me on the bed. She claims that he tried to kiss her and remove her clothing as he pinned her down. Quote, and I saw something come over his eyes. I swear to God, like black. His eyes had no more color. They were black, like the devil. Like a different person literally entered his body. Oh my gosh. I was screaming and I was like, what are you doing? Stop, please. You're my friend. I love you. Please don't do this. I don't want to do this. I think he had his hands down my trousers, but I was fighting so hard and I was screaming so hard, hoping that I can get through somehow. I don't know what the actual definition of SA is, but it feels like that. He didn't actually, I guess, go all the way because she didn't allow it. She says that she kept begging him to get off of her and eventually he gave up, which at one point he flipped and then was super angry. He was shouting, F you, you're fired. Wow. And then she <laughs> grabbed her clothes and ran to her car barefoot. The reason why I think this one might have some legs to it is because there were people present, uh, there was three or four people outside of the house that it, they could hear what was going on. And it was so loud and the woman was screaming for her life. Um, and they knew exactly what was going on. Um, but the people outside, um, well, they, they claimed that they were too much in fear of Russell Brand. They didn't know what to do about the situation. Um, and there might be some other psychological things going on there about why they didn't intervene. Um, and uh, But they knew exactly what was happening. And so they are witnesses to the actual incident. And the fact that they've included that in the documentary as well kind of suggests to me that if uh, it did go to court in some way, they've probably got a lot more information to back up the claims they're making there because of the the way that they've handled the documentary and the way that investigative journalism works. Um, and the lawyers at Channel 4 would have been all over this, you know, making sure that they do have an airtight story. Um, otherwise, Channel 4 is going to <laughs> be paying a lot of money out in libel, isn't it? That is a big problem for Russell because even one of those bystanders who were at his home went and told Phoebe that they regretted not going in there and saving her. They all knew what was going on there. I can't imagine like hearing someone scream for help and not running to save the day. But uh, yeah, I mean, who? I, 
I just really hope that like if I was in that situation, my friends would come and try to rescue me. Now let's talk about Diana because she had a six month relationship with Russell starting in February 2007 and they briefly lived together. She describes being harmed by Russell and him being physically and emotionally harmful towards her. She claims that she was really taken advantage of at the Lori Hotel in Manchester. She describes how Russell became angry when he found out that she had spoken to an ex-boyfriend, snatching a phone from her, ripping the case apart, and then pulling out the battery. She describes how Russell doesn't say a word, then he stands close to her, he slides his hands down the front of her jeans and to her privates and forces a finger inside of her, and she was not ready for this intrusion. She did not find it sensual or pleasant. Russell allegedly walked out of the room silently, leaving her feeling confused, uncomfortable, and a little stunned. She also describes how once he forced her to brush her teeth so hard that her gums bled so that she would taste anonymous to him. Diana writes that Russell pushes boundaries, controlling other people to fulfill personal perversions for the sake of dominance and for the sake of something, something evil. We've seen Russell act out in every facet of his life, whether he's on screen or behind the set, or if he's in his hotel room, in his home, he constantly feels like he can do whatever he wants when he wants to. And at one point in his show, he spoke to someone named Vanessa and the comments he made about her daughters are disturbing. Um, I met Russell Brand when I was a guest on E Forum and um, Big Brother's Big Mouth. So our career paths crossed quite naturally over the years. Um, um, and on other occasions, I met him as a friend, I met him on various shows. And one of those occasions was in 2006, when I appeared on his chat show, One Leicester Square. Here's a clip of that particular show. Have a look at this and see what you think. Can I have it off with either you or your daughters? <laughs> Three at once. No. Damn. She's always one step not. ahead. Certainly not. Vanessa no. Phelps. Come on, some no. of them are adults. I've got two daughters. The answer's no, and I'm no. None of them. Hold on. Neither. Let's go neither. You've got we... two whole daughters, you and I can't it? even have no, one. No, you can't. No, you can't. Selfish. When you have your own daughters, you'll know why I said that. It's just not even funny. It's uncomfortable. And also, as a parent, I can't imagine like some creepy man like suggesting himself onto that. Also, I don't know if he has kids, but I hope he doesn't. And for a long time, a lot of fellow female comedians have been warning everyone about Russell. They probably don't want to ever be in the same room with him because he really does seem super aggressive. Quote, when he saw me, he would grab me and bite my face. <laughs> it was coupled with a weird, horrible energy. This comedian also witnessed his behavior at parties. Quote, he was like the predator. He would show up and then you would see him scan a room who he hadn't slept with and who he was going to sleep with. He should have never got to Hollywood. His behavior should have stopped that, but he was able to become a Hollywood star and do so well out of it. Daniel Sloss is another comedian and he's one of the only comedians out here that will actually use his name and share what he's seen Russell do. Why is Daniel Sloss the only one who's called out Russell Brand? Daniel Sloss claimed that female comedians had a WhatsApp group warning each other of people they had uncomfortable experiences with, which included Russell Brand. Daniel went on to say, I know for many, many years that women have been warning each other ab ab about Russell. In reaction to Daniel speaking out, people online have been praising him for refusing anonymity to call out Russell Brand publicly. One creator even said, He did it because it was the right thing to do and to be part of the solution. Daniel not only called out one of the biggest names in the entertainment industry, but he also stood up for women in general, not just telling them to speak out on their experiences, but to do so knowing that men should be holding their peers accountable. So now a lot of people are looking at Russell and his team and all of these networks that work with him and asking why. Well, Russell's denying everything. He put out a video saying, the allegations pertain to a time when he was working in mainstream, when he was in the newspapers all the time, when he was in the movies, when he was written about in books and he was very promiscuous. Now during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. Okay. Russell says that he believes that he's the subject of a coordinated attack and that he is gonna look into the because it was very, very serious. The decision that Russell Brand made yesterday to put that video out was incredibly strategic in a multitude of ways, but I want to talk about the most concerning way to me at this moment. 
And that is that Russell Brand knew in putting out this video last night that this would be one of the big headlines, the video itself, Andrew Tate giving him support, Elon Musk giving him support. Because Russell knew, and his PR team, knew that people were gonna wake up today and they were gonna see the headlines about what was coming out from the Times and Channel 4 and these terrible allegations against him. And the whole thing was gonna be a big story. But they don't want the focus to be on the actual allegations. So they're trying to exhaust the headlines with the like, you know, Russell Brand puts out a video and says, you know, that the mainstream media is out to get him because anything to distract you from what is actually going to come out. This definitely isn't a great look for Russell, especially with a lot of his colleagues speaking out now. And those who've been speaking out for a long time. I mean, actually, this man, Sean Locke, disclosed back in 2014 that he did not like Russell Brandt because he has daughters. And of course, no parent wants their child to bring someone home like Russell Brandt, who's so ignorant. Probably the reason I hate him so much is because um, <laughs> I'm a dad. And I've got this fear that one day my daughters will bring something like that home. <laughs> and he'll come in and go, oh, oh, <laughs> such pleasure to be in your charming abode. <laughs> Bloody Lord, it's very delicious. Now, we've mentioned Katy Perry a few times in this video. And if you guys didn't know, she actually was broken up with by Russell over text message 14 months into their marriage. Katy Perry has actually hinted that she knew the real truth about ex Russell Brand in a past interview. She says he didn't like the atmosphere of me being the boss on tour. So that was really hurtful and it was very controlling, which was upsetting. Well, you know, he likes to be in control, so I don't even know why you go for someone like Katy Perry who's so successful. The singer told Vogue that she felt a lot of responsibility for the end of their marriage until she found out the real truth. Quote, I can't necessarily disclose it because I keep it locked in my safe for a rainy day. I let go and I was like, you know, this isn't for me. This is beyond me. So she's not really sharing what information she has on him, but she probably learned some really bad things and was happy that they broke up. Russell Brand actually broke up with Katy Perry via text message. Katy said that he would never go on tour with her, even though she would ask over and over again, just so that they could spend more time together. She also said that Russell had this disdain for how empowered Katy was on this tour. She described Russell as a tornado and that when everything was happening, it was happening at once. Katie also said that she felt a lot of responsibility for the demise of this marriage. She wanted to fix things, she wanted to patch things up, but he seemed like he was done with it immediately. But this is what's really interesting. She went on to say, I found out the real truth, which I can't necessarily disclose because I keep it locked in my safe for a rainy day. Allegedly, one of these allegations against Russell Brand happened five to six months after these two split. This was an intense video, so thanks for hanging in there. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye, guys.